So I want to introduce you today to Rayshon Armstrong. Rayshon was a light in our community, a beacon. He made our kids laugh. He inspired and motivated them. As a teacher at our Walton School, he taught them to read and gave them hope. Until tragically, on April 24, 2014, he was gunned down. Too many of our young people in our community are being killed by their neighbors. In the United States today, in the last 10 years, there's been 120 people killed by terrorist attacks, yet we've lost 300,000 citizens to gun violence. Cleveland outpaces Chicago in deaths per capita. The headlines lead with things like Virginia Tech and Columbine and Chardon and Sandy Hook. You know that 2% of all deaths are mass shootings, yet they get 98% of the media coverage. I vividly remember the day that T.J. Lane tragically took the life of four students in Chardon, which is a community we neighbor. In our neighborhood that weekend, six young people got killed. Did you read about it? Did you hear about it? I'm guessing your answer is no. So my wife and I, uh, when I came to the Boys and Girls Club in 2006, I really didn't know anything about this epidemic of gun violence. My wife and I raised our children in a white rural community in Geauga County. We seem to have a pretty perfect life. We're in our 38th year of marriage. My wife has dedicated her life to helping people with cancer. We have three wonderful daughters who are well-educated, married to three wonderful young men, two beautiful grandchildren. In the 51 years before Boys and Girls Club, I never experienced a death by gun violence. Yet all that changed when I was called to lead the Boys and Girls Clubs of Cleveland. I've often been asked, how did you get there? And I can only call it divine intervention, that God had a plan for me. The Boys and Girls Clubs provides after-school space, safe place for kids to learn and grow, and to build hope and opportunity. Yet in the time I've been there, 50 of my people have been killed. I can't think about the, the sadness and the profound impact on our families and our community. So I want to talk about shifting the conversation from teddy bears and candles on street corners to, to uplifting a child, celebrating their birthday, talking about their great performance in the field or in a play, helping them graduate from high school and celebrating their graduation from college. So what can we do about this? Well, I've got four ideas that I want to talk about. First and foremost is education. I talked to a woman from East Cleveland, Belinda Kyle, and asked Belinda, what do you think we can do about this epidemic of gun violence? She said, Ron, I don't think we can do much. I said, as long as babies are being born into families with no hope, it won't change. And it reminded me of Blake, a young member of my, my uh, clubs who was 18 years old. He sat before a panel and they asked him, Blake, what do you want for your 18th birthday? He said, sir, I already have it. I'm still alive. And so Belinda and I wanted to talk about education. She sacrificed everything to make sure her children go to private schools. She, she humorously calls herself the queen of coupon clipping. But her daughter is going to Beaumont School. They've all gone to private school. And I've gotten to know Ricky, and she's headed for Barnard College at Columbia University. So Belinda knows the value of education and that that's her children's way out. The second thing I think about is reducing access to guns. There was a, a film showed recently at the Cleveland Film Festival called 91% and 91% of Americans believe that we ought to have background checks to get guns, that we ought to close gun show loopholes, and that we should, um, we should limit access to uh, high, high assault rifles. Recently a couple of kids of mine were talking to a reporter that they had been shot and he asked him, how easy it is it to get a gun? And he said, well, sir, go down to the McDonald's on Broadway. By the time you get back, we'll have a gun. So I ask you, would you rather have a Big Mac or a Glock? The third thing I think about is prevention. It's said that one, when a bullet hits flesh, that $1 million will be spent on medical, on adjudicating, on arresting, and stopping the retaliation event. This year in Cleveland, we've had 450 assaults with guns in the first half of the year. 
80 have end up, ended up in death. Can you imagine what we could do with $80 million to help prevention work, open up new clubs, and help our, and support our young people? And the last thing I want to talk about is lifting up a young person. When I came to the club in 2006, I met a young man named Terrell. And Terrell, I, I think you're here. If you're here, stand up, would you? Terrell? Right over here. So Terrell grew up in the tough neighborhoods around 71st and Harvard. The club was a place for him to go. He was a track star at East Tech, and he had earned a scholarship to go to Ohio University. At the Boys and Girls Club, one of the biggest honors is to be named the Youth of the Year, and Terrell was that. He left for Ohio, Ohio University in Athens, had a ter terrific first semester. But when he came home in the second semester, he was arrested for reckless homicide. Terrell had been at a party. There was a gun at the party, and during the night, that gun was unloaded. But somewhere along the night, somebody put a bullet into it. And Terrell's best friend from fourth grade was killed. But Terrell spent 42 months in jail, and the club never gave up at him. He and his mom and I all often went down to visit. We provided money for him to get books and to stay fresh and keep, keep his mind alert. Um, <clears throat> when he got out 42 months later, our club wrapped their arms around him. They provided him with some work that he could do so he'd have walking around money. Terrell scored a, a minimum wage job with, um, with uh, Goodwill, but he, was really, he really loved technology. And so he and I met a Cisco representative, and the Cisco rep said, hey, Terrell, you should go to Tri-C and take the, Terrell, uh, take the uh, Cisco Academy uh, class. And he did, and he passed with flying colors. Terrell went on to build his own business. He's got a distribution business. And today, this last month, few months, he bought a house, cash, with no debt. He continues to build that business and be successful. He, was he and I were recently invited to uh, My Brother's Keeper, the, uh, an event that uh, Sherrod Brown uh, sponsored. And he was asked to tell his story, and he did. And I will tell you that he talked about the authenticity and, and the relationship and the importance of having that people cared and mentoring. And, and I have another story I'd like to share with you. Stephanie, if we, you would stand up. Stephanie um, is a young lady I met more than six years ago. And this, this um, birthday, she gave me a birthday card that really talks about how important these relationships. The card says, Father, someone who cares and helps guide you. Share DNA not required. She went on to write, I wish my real father would have loved me. I'm going to cry, so I'm can't help it, and cared for me as you do. I still think he wouldn't have been half the father to me as you are. Thanks for loving me. Dad, I love you text, the checkup text. Remembering my birthday, never letting me starve, always pushing me, clapping at my graduation, and most of all, thank you for being, choosing to be the best adoptive parent I, I never thought I'd have. And she just said, happy birthday, pops. So... <laughs> What, what's the takeaway? I hope you know more about the, the, the epidemic that's taking 30,000 Americans a year. I hope that you can and will do something about it. Every one of us can lift up a young person's life. You can get involved easily by getting involved in your local school, your local church. You can become a big brother, as I did, and sign up for a big brother program. You can offer to volunteer at a Boys and Girls Club or another after-school program. And someday you'll get a card, and I remember I also got a gift card for lunch, so that was really neat. But most of all, what will happen is you'll save a life. Thank you.